how good have biophysical economics models been? Let's take a look. And first, we're going to say how good have uh, conventional economics models been for some of the same things. Um, and uh, CER, Cambridge Energy Research Associates Laboratory, people give them an enormous amount of money to make predictions about economics, and they're universally wrong. Um, and they're done by economists, which is too bad because this is uh, Daniel Jurgen, who has done beautiful work in the past, and I think crappy work for the last 10 or 15 years, but that's my opinion. But that just, uh, his predictions are where the end of the red arrows are, and the reality is the blue. And uh, next, that, that continues. Um, um, and so this is a statement that Sarah made about what, how much oil would be, produ be producing now. And he said by, well, a year from now, we'd be producing 112 million barrels per day. And in fact, for oil, we're producing about 80, 000, 80 million barrels a day. So that's just another example of an economist making a prediction that has been completely wrong. Next. Um, in terms of explicitly testing a biophysical model output, I, uh, we, we published this paper in 2004 um, <coughs> in which we used to move the over into the, into the camera. Where's the camera? Oh. Hi, Mom. Switch. No. Okay. Get out of the way. So, uh, so we, we published this paper in 2004, and John Halleck, uh, and he's one of the co-authors officially on this, has, has done an amazing work on this. Um, and then we, I, I couldn't capture the image like I did before, but we republished it 10 years later and took a look at how good our predictions had been. So we are predicting um, an economic model I'm, or predicting the same thing, what oil production that economists have done, but we're doing it with a biophysical model based on a Hubbard curve and different estimates of what's called EUR, uh, ultimate extraction of the resource uh, of oil in this case. And the, the concept in a simplified form, and I'm going to show you slightly more complicated ones, is that you see um, the line that goes mostly through the middle and peaks and goes down um, is our prediction of oil production from Mexico. This is a bit old, and the uh, blue line, uh, well, the orange line is empirical data. And so you see that at this point we were doing this, um, the, the production estimated by our model, which is in the d purple diamonds, uh, not the light purple, the dark purple uh, diamonds, is going down. That was our prediction. That's the simplest way. And the idea is that the use of oil by Mexico, if it continued to grow, and the official estimates were given there in the light purple with squares, I guess they are, going upward. And the idea is that the Mexico would cease being an exporter when those lines crossed. OK, now we're going to look rather quickly at all of our predictions. And what we did, uh, let's see, an easy one to look at might be Argentina. Um, and so the USGS gave three estimates of EUR, ultimate oil resource. And um, they gave a low one, which is, uh, if you're looking at Argentina, the purple long dashes a middle best estimate, and uh, which is blue dashes, and then an upper light blue, which is a high estimate. Now, in this case, the predictions were made in 2004, or 2002, it was the data in our 2004 paper, and the validation 
is the red line dots since the vertical line. Does that, is that clear to everybody? We're, we're making predictions in 2004, and the red dots are checking the predictions that were made in 2004 against the data that went up to 2014. Um, and in this case, the model followed a Hubbard curve with the USGS high estimate of the total amount of oil. In other words, the total amount of oil, the EUR, is the integrated area under the curve. So we're going to look at the nations, the major oil producing nations of the world versus this model. And three versions of this model, low EUR, medium best guess EUR by the USGS, not by us, and high estimates of oil. And so let's just take a run through that. Algeria looks like we are, it's a little hard to say, but more or less the, uh, on the middle uh, EUR estimate. Uh, Angola, uh, pretty close to the low. Argentina, as I said, pretty close to the high. Angola, the blue dots mean it's offshore, uh, deep, ultra deep oil. And uh, the model would say basically failed or did it for Angola. They developed much faster than we had anticipated, uh, but they've reached a peak and decline. So one of the things, one of the hypotheses we're testing here is biophysically will there be peak oil for these individual countries? And of course, there's a lot of controversy about peak oil. So to a certain extent, we're using a biophysical model to test that. Australia, there's an Aussie here somewhere, uh, below the low. Bolivia, below the low. Bahrain, about the medium. Brunei, almost perfectly the low. Look at their all peaks. Brazil, uh, onshore and at the low. Uh, Cameroon, uh, closer between medium and low. Brazil, offshore, including offshore, um, pretty close to high. Canada, uh, conventional oil, this is only for conventional oil, uh, a little bit higher than any of our models, et cetera. China, uh, about medium. But all of them, essentially, I got five minutes left? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Colombia, uh, near the low and then skipped up. Denmark, near the low. Um, Ecuador, uh, about medium. Egypt, uh, hmm, medium, medium low. All with a peak. Germany, uh, a little bit higher than high. India, between medium and low. Iran, uh, who knows about Iran. Uh, Indonesia, too early to say. About medium. Iraq, uh, too early to say. Kuwait, uh, probably closest to low, hard to say. Malaysia, pretty close to low. Libya, uh, war, can't tell. Mexico, pretty close, offshore, uh, pretty close to low. And when you do all of these, essentially every country except a few very big ones are following a Hubbard curve. So does oil production follow an economic model or a Hubbard curve? the Hubbard curve being a, a, a biophysical thing during a time in which the oil, incidentally, was price of oil was increased by three times in real uh, terms. And the answer is they follow Hubbard curves, and 80% uh, of them follow the low. And very few of them follow the high, but, but some of them do. Um, and Russia's too early to tell, but maybe middle. Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, you can't tell because they're holding back production, so who can tell? Uh, Sudan looks like it's peaking, following low, going a little above that, peaking, and going back down. Syria, well, then we had the war. And why did they have the war, incidentally? In Syria and Egypt, they had peak oil. Uh, Thailand, uh, well, they're all pretty close together. Trinidad and Tobago, pretty much uh, medium and then low. Uh, Tunisia, low, UAR, low, Turkey, low to medium, UK, low, US conventional oil, um, between medium and low, Vietnam, mm, they're pretty close together, Venezuelan, below, low, Yemen, low. What about 
Tide oil, you say. Well, tide oil, this is fracking stuff, ain't going to last long. That will give you an idea um, of what tide oil is going to do for us. We're exploiting it real ha fast. Uh, so to, the, to conclude the last part, the biophysical model works pretty damn well. Uh, the limits to growth model have been explicitly tested by, didn't you do something on that? No. Uh, well, anyway, it's been tested by several people, including Holland Day, Palmer, hmm? and anyway, the limits to growth model, most people think it failed. In fact, it's right smack on. Yeah, as of today, um, David Murphy came up with this model, uh, which I think explains what's going on with oil today. Uh, increasing GDP in oil demand uh, during a peak, peak oil error leads to new low energy return on investment resources being used, leads to high price, oil price, high oil supply, leads to stalled or declining economy. All the price of oil was up very high one year ago. And basically all of the economies of at least um, OECD D countries have stopped declining. Lower oil demand, lower oil prices, maybe we're going to go back through this cycle again. I don't know. But I would say, David, we should do, you should do, we should do this more explicitly because I think your biophysical prediction was right on the money. And I rest my case. Chair is chair.